peerconnectingmidmideast.net, and uh, we're here at the to Happen to Hold conference, uh, conference uh, uh, Marriage in Pre-Modern Europe. And I'm here with uh, Shannon McSheffrey from Concordia University. And Shannon, would you like to ask him to talk to people? Yeah, I'm very glad to be here. I did the first day to talk about the marriage case in late medieval London, and I used that in order to talk really about how it was that we come to know about these different kinds of documents we have, and how we sometimes need to be a little bit more careful than sometimes are about what the documents mean, because as I discovered by looking at various documents related to the case that talked about, um, there was actually some kind of shaky dealings happening in the legal processes. And so sometimes those documents don't say what really happened, but at the same time we can use those documents sometimes to really try to uncover the processes that were underlying the litigation. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy uh, medieval London. I kind of researched in the 14th century, but you do a little bit of a later medieval. How did you get involved and get interested in working on medieval London? I, I work mostly on the period between, say, about 14, on the 1440s and about the 1530s or so. And I became originally interested in London after having done a project that covered most of southern England. And I became particularly interested in London because it has um, a series of records that come from very different kinds of directions. And so um, it has a good, sort of good body of church records, um, which is fairly uncommon for late medieval jurisdictions. It also has um, often replaced church court records don't then have civic records, city records, but London does. And then also, because London is right near the royal courts of Westminster, there are also many many very relevant materials in the royal court records as well. So you can look at problems using all kinds of different sorts of records and, and that can give you a really rich picture of what it was that was going on. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I always enjoyed looking through the, the calendars of uh, plea rules and memorandum rules and letter, uh, letter books. Uh, so it, I find it to be a really, you know, you can find out quite a lot of information with a wide variety of topics. That's right, that's right. Now, you know, we were talking in the session about, uh, you know, being wary of like, looking at archival sources and uh, uh, suggestions you might have for some people are just trying to get involved in going to archives for the first time, what do they should be wary of to look out for? Well, I think that one of the things that we always have to have is our is, 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 a, is, a, a, is a, a quite thick veneer of skepticism um, that we need to so, you know, often I think that one of the things that, that tricks us about medieval documents is that we get involved in the stories that they tell, and they seem to us sometimes, in fact, quite heartbreaking or, or fascinating. And I think that there are points where we need to step back again and understand that sometimes the fascinating stories that they tell are deliberately fascinating, that they were, they were told to be arresting. Um, that they were in fact themselves stories told to persuade, for instance, a judge. And, um, and that there are times where we get kind of tricked by that and tend to believe the stories that are being told. Sometimes again, when you dig a little bit deeper, you find out that it is in fact basically a fiction. An interesting fiction, and the fact that it is this fiction being told in a court tells us quite a lot about the society that produced it. But nonetheless, we can't always believe what we read, I think, is, is you know, a general historical lesson, not just about archival research, but about historical research in general. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Peter.